I'm Curtis Nickel, a urologist and professor of urologists at Queen's University in Kingston, Canada. I'm also a Canada Research Chair in Urologic Infection, Inflammation, and Pain. And it is a pleasure to provide an introduction to the urinary microbiome. I'm going to present a three-part series. The first part is going to be a primer on the introduction to the urinary microbiome. Following that, in part two, we'll discuss how the urinary microbiome impacts urology disease. And finally, in part three, we're going to look at ways we can manipulate or change our urinary microbiome for urologic health. To start with, we have to understand what this urinary microbiome really means. Well, it turns out that although the urinary microbiome only accounts for uh, three to four pounds of our total weight or mass, it represents more individual cells than we have mammalian cells in our body. It presents more genetic diversity than we have in our mammalian cells. And it turns out that our microbiome certainly shoots over its weight in its importance in our health, including urologic health. The microbiome, particularly the gut microbiome, which we know most about, significantly impacts health and disease. It creates a type of homeostasis in our body. It re regulates neuroendocrine type mechanisms beyond the microbiome, talks to each other, and even affects our central nervous system. It in fact, it, in fact, it impacts our general well-being and health across all organ systems. Now, the human microbiome is becoming recognized as important not only in the gut, but in other parts of the body, including the urinary tract. Yet, except for pathogens that cause infection or the helicopylori story for gastric inflammation, we've not been able to really find a putative microorganism that accounts for most of the disease. And we believe that it's the ecology of our microbiome that's important. Rather than a single bacteria, it might be the diversity or the populations or ecology within the gut and the urinary tract. We call this dysbiosis. And this dysbiosis or bad ecological um, sort of situation in the body is what may pr uh, promote disease. Now, what does this really have to do with us as urologists and the urinary tract? Well, the traditional dogma up to really only a decade or two ago was the urinary tract was sterile. I was taught this as a resident and early urologist. And when I found a bacteria on culture, I usually figured that that caused an infection. And this belief persisted until really the, the last decade. In fact, the Human Microbiome Project from 2007 completed in 2016, which looked at the gen genetics of the microbiome in many of the human body organ systems, excluded the urinary tract. It was because of a conception or perception really in 2007 even that the urine was either sterile or the microbiome was so sparse that it was not really important to human health or disease. What has changed that? Well, we've always looked at the microbiology in the urinary tract by culturing urine in Petri dishes using standard media for a standard amount of time and what we found was uropathogens causing infection. And that's been good. We were able to use antibiotics and take care of those infections. But we missed 99% of the bacteria in the urinary tract. And these non-culture techniques, such as next generation sequencing, has shown us 
as in this particular uh, slide from our urine studies, that the urinary tract is in fact not sterile. It is a veritable microbial jungle. Now I have to talk to you a little bit about the science that you're gonna see in microbiome studies in this lecture and other lectures. You're gonna see wonderful diagrams and figures such as I've presented here, which unless you're different than me, are totally uninterpretable. The best way, if you're not a microbiologist interested in interpreting these, is to look at these sort of as art, as beautiful art. Look for the colors, the, the patterns, the differences, the shading. That's what I do. Now we do have uh, very complex statistical analyses that we do with these microbiome studies. And if I could, I would explain it to you, but even I can be explained some of these very complex uh, data analyses with almost metadata that we get from these studies. And I usually forget very quickly what it means. So what we hope to do in these series of lectures is introduce the complex of simplicity of the microbiome so you can actually see that we are determining patterns and ecology and groups of urotypes of um, bacteria in various disease processes. That's what I want you to look for. Now, 2019, last year, an important study shows that they looked at all the bacterial species reported in the literature associated with infection in the urinary tract. And they were able to identify 330 individual species reported in the literature associated with infection. Well, 2020 is not 2019. The um, MicroGen DX, which is a commercial company that uh, uses NGS and PCR technology to uh, examine urines of uh, patients with presumed or real infection, uh, allowed me unfettered access to their database of over 70,000 individual urine samples. And they were able to identify over 4,000 individual species within the urinary tract. So that's patients with symptoms. So what is a normal urinary tract? Well, you know, it was only six or seven years ago that the first study using up-to-date uh, technology, uh, non-culture technology to look at normal ur uh, urobiome. And this was a study that was published was 10 healthy females, six healthy males. And what they determined is that there is a very heterogeneous mix of bacterial species and genera within the urinary tract of healthy individuals, with females showing a wider range of general, genera and greater diversity than males. So we also are looking at this in the National Institutes of Health uh, multi uh, disciplinary approach to pelvic pain study in which we did have 97 uh, males that were healthy, asymptomatic, and 119 females. And we did the same thing using non-culture, state-of-the-art technology, and we're able to look at these. And what we did is we noted differences in prevalence and diversity of species and genus between male and female, those that were under 50 and over 50 years old within the gender, and with pre- and post-menopausal females. But it was interesting that we did find what we would presume uropathogenic bacteria in the microbiome of these asymptomatic subjects. We've initiated an ongoing normal microbiome study with 600 subjects planned. This is the initial uh, analyses with 17 female and 14 male. And we can see that we have 19 genera by um, gender, the relative abundance on the left, and the relative abundance of the individual subjects by uh, gender. So it is going to be very complicated, the normal microbiome 
but it's essential that we understand this before we know how to interpret the microbiome in the urinary tract of patients with urologic disease. If only it was that simple, but it's even more complicated. Um, Wolf and Mueller have shown that the urinary tract is more complicated than what we see in the microbiome of the midstream urine. In fact, the microbiota at different sites of voided urine, catheterized urine, urethral swabs, periurethral and vaginal swabs are different. They're very similar because they contain the same, at least some of the same organisms, but they can be different. And so we have to take that into consideration when we look at both the uro urinary microbiome in healthy and disease states. We also have a phenomenon that we know more and more about is the microbial biofilm. The model was with chronic uh, pro and prosthesis associated infection where bacteria tend to want to live in aggregates or communities surrounded by an exopolysaccharide, um, a glycocalyx that protects them from environmental threats. Now, there's two populations in microbiome infections and microbiome colonization. The sessile bacteria that are stuck to the bladder wall or the prostheses and the planktonic that are floating free. Well, the problem is that we usually are sampling in our urine sample, the planktonic bacteria, which may or may not be related to the disease state. We also know that there is a microbiome in the urinal, urinary genital tract. And the microbiome, although fewer organisms and less abundance and less density, could be very important in some of the disease states. And this, this is very new science. However, in this era of COVID-19, the virome itself is extremely important. And we're just now starting to understand that there may be a specific virome in health and disease within the urinary tract that may or may not interact with the mucosa, the urinary organs, perhaps even with the bacterial and fungal microbiome and microbiome. So it is complicated, but we leave with the realization that bacteria, who for a century since its discovery, we thought was our foe or our enemy, might actually be our friend. The urinary system is a variable microbial jungle, and the aim and objective of our microbiome is to have their host healthy. It's their universe as much as ours. So I leave you with a message. We really are our microbiome and our microbiome is there for us. And the more we understand the normal microbiome and the microbiome and disease states, the better we will be to understand ourselves. Thank you.